Hello, welcome to this latest version of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And I'm delighted today to be joined uh, by John, Karen and Kyle, who are, are delivering an interesting conversation around, well, really student attainment, really, and what could be done to improve that. And I, I, I think looking ahead, I've, I've, I've seen some of the statistics coming out of the college and you're definitely doing something right. So without further ado, over to you, John, tell us more. Okay, thanks, Kenji. It's good to have the opportunity to tell you a bit about uh, some of the work at Glasgow Clyde on improving student attainment in recent years. You'll see from the first slide there that the attainment's gone up about 8% over a three-year period. Um, so you might be wondering how that improvement came about. What can we learn from it? Um, what I would say is that there's, there's quite a number of factors involved. Uh, one of the key ones, I think, is that the retention and attainment has had uh, quite a bit higher profile in the college in recent years, led by the principal. There's been more scrutiny of retention and attainment and evaluation and improvement processes. And also the college has established a, a small specialist team with a remit for building capacity for improvement and, and uh, for improving retention and attainment. And it's mostly the work of that team that I'll be talking about this morning. And I've got a role as a, a program leader of our, what, what we call our research and development program. But it's essentially focused around improving student retention and attainment. So it's about working with colleagues about how they approach evaluation and improvement it's a, a, a coaching, mentoring and internal consultancy model. We work with course team leaders across the college and we do quite a bit of work around sharing of practice across the college and trying to learn from some of the research evidence and from practice elsewhere. Um, you, might, you might wonder, you know, what's the background to that particular approach? Why have we gone down that route? The, there have been discussions went on for quite a number of years at Glasgow Clyde about the idea of some kind of improvement centre or research and development programme that would focus on bringing about improvements, particularly in relation to outcomes for students. And I was seconded uh, quite a few years ago to do a scoping exercise on that. It involved looking at the the literature on retention and attainment and evaluation and improvement processes. There was quite a bit of consultation across the college with people working at all levels. There was a lot of consultation externally with Education Scotland, the Teaching Council, College Development Network, people working in universities. And we were very influenced by um, the work of Education Scotland and Education Scotland improvement model and also quite influenced by some work Helen Timperley has done about what kind of conversations uh, bring about improvements for students. So some of our working assumptions have been kind of firstly just the recogni recognition how important colleges are, that colleges give students a chance to transform their life op opportunities. Um, so when that doesn't work well, when a student drops out of a course or fails a course, it's quite a, quite potentially quite a significant loss for the individual and for society. So there's a real imperative to think for every course that we're offering, what can we do to try and bring, it, bring about better outcomes for our students? When we looked at the research on uh, retention and attainment, I think it's pretty clear there's no silver bullet. There's not one thing that colleges can do that would, would bring about um, major improvements. But one of the key things I think is to think about the, the human experience that students have at college in their learner journey. Um, and there's, there's evidence that if students don't get to the point of feeling that they belong academically and they belong socially, then they're not likely to be able to tough out when their studies become challenging. There's good evidence that lots of students do consider leaving courses. So for that reason, I think nurturing a sense of belonging should be a real priority for staff. 
and that's one of the, the themes that our, our programme has kind of been encouraging colleagues to think about. Um, it's important, I think, that for, for coast teams, a, a, a coast team level, to think about what the key issues are for their own particular course. The research and academic belonging is quite interesting. And some of the, the key uh, findings are highlighted there, that the things that foster academic belonging for students are really the kind of things that we would associate with good teaching anyway. Lots of active learning, lots of group-based learning and teaching, a lot of learning by doing, um, clarity and transparency about assessment uh, processes, lots of feedback for students on how to improve. And as I was saying earlier, one, one, another element that has really influenced our thinking is some work Helen Timperley did for the Australian Institute of Teaching and School Leadership. So what they were interested in was what kind of discussions take place in educational systems that actually are effective in bringing about better outcomes for students. So, so she was commissioned to do some research on that. And she, she highlighted some key characteristics that you can see on the slide there. She would say that when, when people are effective in working together to bring about better outcomes, they're really focused on what she calls the moral imperative of bringing about better outcomes for students. People are willing to, to put their existing assumptions to one side and take a, a fresh perspective. The, the effect of professional discussions depend on a lot of trust and challenge and people having high expectations about what's possible for students. And also people are willing to think about what they can do that will make a difference, what they can change and not the things that are out with their control. And when all these things are in place, people develop a sense of agency. So people come out of the meetings whether they're a teacher, a lecturer, a senior lecturer, a head of curriculum, and they feel a sense of agency. Here's something I could do, here's something I could try that might make a difference for our students. And one of uh, Helen Timberley's interesting conclusions is this observation that expertise in conversational process is essential for productive conversation. So there's a particular kind of skill to making these conversations work well. And that's influenced the design of our improvement program. So we have a, a small team of development advisors and you'll be hearing uh, from two of them today. Um, and the development advisors are, are essentially a facilitator for improvement. So we've had training in coaching, consultants, stay and counselling skills. We've had a bit of time to become familiar with some of the research evidence on retention and attainment. And what we do is we work one-to-one -one with course team leaders across the college. We facilitate lots of uh, workshops and practice sharing events to give people a chance to get a fresh perspective on what they're doing. And the whole approach is kind of built on a belief that it's, it's teams and team leaders that have got ownership of evaluation and improvement. So it's not up to a development advisor to go in and diagnose what needs to be done to improve. Uh, it's been a, a college-wide approach that has had very high-level support. So the principal sent an email to all 96 course team leaders outlining this new approach that the college had to improvement. Uh, people were sent a briefing paper about issues to think about before they met with their development advisor. Um, I work very closely with uh, our assistant principal for quality and performance. There's good links with the uh, leadership team. We are closely involved in, in various kind of self-evaluation validation processes that the college has. And as you'll see from the final point there in the slide, we work right across the college with faculty, schools, course teams, heads of curriculum, senior lecturers and lecturers. So a very small team, just 1.5 posts, but we're working right across the college and trying to think about the whole learner journey. Um, one, I think one of the really important issues here is that the, the phrase evaluation and improvement 
can, can sometimes evoke strong feelings and mixed feelings. Uh, Rob Leiper wrote a paper about evaluation where he said, any system of evaluation can all too easily come to feel like an accusation of inadequacy. So I think it's really important to, to think about how we can foster a climate to have the kind of discussions that Helen Timperley uh, identified the characteristics of. One pair people feel safe enough where there's enough trust for people to be open about the challenges, uh, about possible improvements. On one level, what the programme offers is something fairly simple. It's a safe space for people to think out loud about what's working and what's not working. It's a chance to get a fresh perspective and practice. Um, and it's time with a colleague who's willing to listen and try and understand and think with them about possible ways forward. Lots of different improvement strategies have been developed across the college. And I've just highlighted a few of them in, on this slide here. One of our social care teams developed a, a peer mentoring program for students called Here to Help. And that's the badges on the top left hand corner there, H2H Here to Help. One of our healthcare teams were very interested in this theme of belongingness and developed a common room for students to, to spend out with class time, to be in out with class time to, to foster this sense of belongingness. And we've done quite a bit of work in course design, which Kyle Betley will tell you about shortly. Uh, so we've done, we, we, we run lots of practice sharing events. Um, Prior to COVID, we had ones on improvement conversations, belongingness, making use of feedback, you know, quite a range of different topics. Um, obviously, COVID has been a, a, a profound shock to college systems across the world. And the overarching aim of our programme continues to be the same since March last year. It's all about how we can bring the best bring about the best possible outcomes for students. But obviously the context has changed profoundly. Colleagues have uh, been experiencing probably the most uh, profound and intense professional challenge in their careers, quite a dislocation for people in their professional and personal experiences. So a lot of our work has really been about, since March has been about trying to provide the best facilitation we can to give people a bit of space to think about where they are now in their work and how to find the best way forward in transitioning to, to new ways of working. And we've done lots of uh, practice sharing events since March last year, um, quite a lot around learning and teaching, uh, some of them discussion groups, some of them with presented material followed up by discussion. We've done workshops for senior lecturers and heads of curriculum around how do you lead and support teams remotely and to develop new ways of working. And we've continued to work in some of the previous themes around belongingness, using data to support student success and so on. So course team leaders have mostly um, valued the opportunity to speak to a, a development advisor about their practice. And for those who have found it helpful, you can see the kind of things that people are saying. Uh, people, a lot of people have highlighted bit the benefit of speaking to somebody out with their own area of practice. People have said things that they find the time motivational, inspiring, it clarifies their thinking about their role. Um, it gives them more sense of what they could, what changes that they can make. Um, so that, that's you know, some of the, the kind of positive feedback that we've had. Just a few concluding thoughts from me before I, I hand you over to Karen and Kyle. So the work of the programme up until March last year was very much focused around improving outcomes for students. And since March last year, there's, there's probably been a bit more of a focus around resilience. And I think there's, there's some similarities between the two issues. Improvement is about moving from an existing way of working 
the new way of working. And uh, whereas resilience, I think, is about how, how do you respond to a change that's been imposed on you? And obviously there's been pretty profound, massive change uh, kind of imposed on colleges since March last year. But our approach to the two different challenges has been similar. It's been about giving people space to reflect on their practice. It's about trying to foster a sense of ownership and agency about ways of moving forward. One of the, the themes that we sometimes discuss is that isolation is the enemy of improvement. If we don't get a chance to develop a fresh perspective on what we're doing, then it's quite difficult to, to develop new ways of working. Um, as, I've, I've, as I've tried to highlight in this presentation, I think improvement relies a lot on fostering relationships of trust and challenge amongst colleagues um, across, across organisations. Um, so I think improving outcomes for students and, and fostering resilience to cope with challenges like COVID are as much about the real relationships and culture in the organisation as they are about strategy. So that's an overview of the programme. And Karen Bale will, will now tell you a bit about some of our one-to-one -one work with senior lecturers. And then Kyle Bentley will tell you a bit about some of our practice sharing work. So it's over to you, Karen. Great, thank you, John. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for having us here today. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit about the one-to-one -one work that we do with senior lecturers. Now, since the programme began in November 2018, we have had more than 600 meetings with more than 90 senior lecturers between the three of us. Some of these meetings are on quite a regular basis, you know, maybe even every week, every fortnight, some are maybe every block, depending on um, the needs of that senior lecturer and how much that they feel that they want to engage with the programme, most um, want to engage on a pretty regular basis. So the idea behind it all is this idea of active listening. And if you think, I think all of us do this in our work life, in our social life, that we tend to listen to a conversation in order to reply. And when somebody's speaking, we're thinking, what can we contribute? Like, what can we add next? How does this, how does this apply to me? And I think we all do that. And what active listening is about, is about really listening to that person. So really thinking, what are they telling me? And usually with people, there's something underlying. There's something that they're trying to tell you and they don't always go straight to that point. And the idea for a meeting is that we can help that person feel valued in that we're listening to them, we're properly listening to them. And often in their working life, maybe even their, their home life or social life, people aren't listened to. So I think that in itself is really, really valuable that the person feels that they are valued, that somebody is listening to them. And what we do in that process is that we'll encourage the person to talk through what's on their mind. And as John said earlier, it's not about us finding the solution. We can't possibly be experts in all these specialist areas that, that we work across. You know, I work with people in hair and beauty, people in fashion, um, general education, and they can't possibly be an expert. But what we do is we try to encourage them to talk through their, identify their problem and find a solution. And what one senior lecturer said to me recently was after an hour long meeting, she said, oh, thanks for, thanks for fixing this for me. Now, I didn't do anything. I just listened. It was her who talked through the situation. She managed to identify what the problem was and she managed to come up with some solutions. So it wasn't me. I was just giving her that space and, and making it clear that I was with her, that I was listening to her. And then she was able to take that ownership and find that answer herself. Um, because we work across so many different areas, we're able to share practice from across the college. So we might be able to say, you know, another senior lecturer was saying this week that this is what they're doing to try and improve student engagement, or these are some online te learning techniques that they're doing in this area. So we're able to try and connect everybody. Can you move on, move on to the next slide, John? Thank you. So these are just some quotes that have come from senior lecturers who work with us. And what I think is really interesting in these, these quotes that I've chosen, which kind of reflect what, what most of the feedback has been like, if you look at what they have said, you know, it helped to improve my morale, um, helped me able to focus on issues. So, um, air feelings without judgment. So that's what they're getting from it. But if you look to see what they're, they're coming to see next, that gave me the confidence to keep encouraging others. That, that made me be able to work with staff and students alike better. 
it helps me to be better prepared when talking with my work group. So it's that idea, as John was saying as well, about how um, if somebody feels valued, if they feel resilient, if they feel that somebody's there who's got their back, they're then able to work better with their course team and with their, with their students. Can we go on to the next one, John? Thanks. So our work has developed a lot throughout lockdown. Um, I think I jokingly said at the, the start of lockdown last year in March that I felt like I was, my job had changed and it was now a mixture of being a counsellor and a cheerleader for positivity. There was, there was a lot of shock as everybody went into online learning and figuring out how are we going to do this? I mean, I know myself, I didn't know what Zoom was on the Wednesday and was teaching a class in Zoom by the Monday and that's the boat that everybody was in. So I think we very much became that supportive voice. I've heard senior lecturers, a brilliant senior lecturer say to me, I feel inadequate because they've gone through a career where they've known what they're doing and suddenly everybody starts doubting themselves. And I think a lot of that comes from the isolation. So what we've tried to do is to, is to keep having these meetings to you know, quite often senior lecturers throughout lockdown, which they, they hadn't done so much or in real, real life um, pre-COVID, they'd be picking up the phone at Microsoft Teams and say, can you help me with this? I just, I need someone to talk to. So I think our role certainly became that, to try and keep that resilience going, to, to keep everybody's head above the water. Um, in terms of technical support, I mean, we are certainly, I'm not, maybe Kyle Moore, um, we're not IT experts, but I think because we get to work in every area across the college, or most areas across the college, we've, we've, we've got our foot in the door, so we know what's going on. And we were lucky enough to be involved in some of the work stream groups across the summer. One that I was involved in was induction. So I was able to then be ahead in terms of creating my induction resources, which I shared with all the SLs that I worked with. And my thinking behind that was, we're in this together. Let's all help each other. So if I've got a template that I can share, that's going to help people think, not just somebody's given me that. So that's something off my list, but I'm not doing this by myself. We're all doing it. So it's this collegiate, collaborative approach, which is what we're, we're trying to do. Um, I think one of the most common questions that was, that was asked of me in the senior lecture meetings, particularly from August, was what's everybody else doing? And I think everyone was doubting themselves a little bit. You know, nobody had taught online before. So what we were able to do was to share ideas. You know, they're, they're doing this in this area. What about this technique? Trying to connect everybody. Um, in terms of intelligence gathering, there was a survey that we put out to all teaching staff to try and gather that intelligence about how staff were coping throughout lockdown. And we, we'd identified through the meetings with SLs that, and this came out in the survey as well, that staff were feeling isolated. They were they're feeling swamped and overwhelmed with their work. They were feeling that there was issues with IT for both staff and students. And I'm sure everyone probably recognises um, that it's something that's common, not just in college, in the college sector, but probably in most areas of life at the moment. Um, so we were able to use that to pass it on to management. So SLT were able to take that information and then to send positive reassuring messages out to staff. But also we were able to use these themes to be able to further our work and prog progress our work. So we set up some discussion groups, which were all about bringing staff together just to have a, we had a number of weekly discussion groups where staff would just come together to discuss, how are you getting on? And in some of the ones that I ran, you know, somebody said, oh, this is like my support group. And it's so nice to meet people across the college. It's so nice to have somebody to talk to. And I think what you know, I've noticed, and I think it, it's, it's a major theme in lockdown, is that we don't have, have these conversations anymore, these random chats about what did you do at the weekend or what did you do last night or what did you watch on Netflix? And I think that can really affect people, can make people feel isolated when you just go into a meeting and it's right, agenda point number one. So I think having that chat and giving people opportunities to connect was helping to deal with that isolation. Um, it also helped us to identify themes to uh, create some workshops, workshops that we have been running throughout lockdown, a number of them, all, and the themes of course came from that intelligence. And I think what's been great about us working with SLs is that we're able to identify staff who have maybe come up with a great idea of how to engage with students, how to get feedback from students, or how to change their course design. And I think in asking them to speak at workshops, it not only helps their morale and it sort of boosts them a little bit, but it allows others, others to learn from that person. And I think, again, these workshops are bringing everyone together. So you click onto a workshop and there's maybe 30 odd people from across the college who've all come together, all want to learn something. And there's a feeling of you're, we're not isolated, we're doing this together. Um, just lastly, as a former journalist, I've, um, I've enjoyed writing articles about a lot of these themes which we've shared um, in our, our college e-newsletter, ClickNX, and our practice sharing page. And it's just another way of giving people these resources and sharing them. So um, 
thank you. Thanks for your time. I'll now pass it over to Kyle, who's going to talk more about the workshops. And I'll talk until Kenji either talks over me or mutes me. Um, so um, just uh, imagine that you take a, an organisation full of highly skilled, passionate people about their job, about their subject area, and start to have conversations about improvement and change and, you know, really um, encouraging that ownership um, around uh, them being the expert and them having the impact uh, to be able to change things. We started to see a lot of really motivated individuals just looking for opportunity there. And we decided that one of the ways we, we could change the work we were doing was to start to bring them together. We held a, a very first senior lecturer forum um, where we got a group of uh, senior lecturers together and we started to have some, some discussion there. We had two presenters, um, one presenter uh, talking about an aspect that they changed um, that was around um, ensuring that there was one guidance teacher that was with um, the group for most of their week and there was only one other teacher on the group and how that had kind of impacted on retention and attainment and also that sense of belongingness. And we had another uh, presenter there, a senior lecturer who had changed a number of their courses which, as you can see from that tiny, tiny little graph that I put on the, the picture there, the red um, was the performance indicators of the previous year. And um, they'd noticed that they had a number of students leaving um, halfway through the year, around about the kind of Christmas time. They changed the, the design of the course to be two shorter courses for the following year. Um, and you can see the, the change in the performance indicators there. That's the green uh, on, the, on the graph just by making that single change to two shorter courses. And that was something that we were able to change and start discussion. So we got a whole load of people there who were really, really motivated and telling us, yes, we were interested. There was some really good discussion. But actually what we did manage to gather there was some intelligence about the information or the tools that these people didn't have and needed to be able to take the next steps. Um, and so one of the things I just wanted to give you an idea of was one of the workshops that we ran that was called Course Design. As we were having these discussions, um, senior lecturers were telling us that although they were managing the curriculum and the qualifications, that they didn't have a good overview generally as a, a group of, of 96 uh, colleagues across the college, uh, a knowledge of the how to design a course, the implications on funding, credits, um, the um, funding for students, uh, and how to design that course. So we worked with colleagues uh, right across the, the college, including the, the student association, the student funding team, the student advice team, our MIS and data systems. And we, we kind of spent quite a lot of time um, gathering some information and getting to a point where we had some really good information that we could share. And again, rather than just sharing that information, um, we wanted to then run it as a workshop so that some of it could be shared, but um, also there could be discussion and thought where people could come together and look at a problem or challenges and they could apply that knowledge and really think about it uh, together. Um, so we've now run a, a number of these, uh, these course design workshops. We've run them for individual teams. We've run them um, as kind of people from, from different courses. And we're starting to see um, different changes happening across the college based on having that information, having the tools and being able to do the, the thinking and the processing uh, around that. Um, just quickly, I wanted to talk about the, the fact that when we did go into lockdown, um, the, the research and development programme, we were the, the kind of first uh, area of the college to be able to offer a, a college-wide online event that got people together to share some of the um, tools and techniques that were being used to, to deliver uh, teaching online, um, and also to share some of the challenges and look at ways, ways of doing uh, and improving. Um, and that was followed by a, a, a huge range of different workshops that were just short and sharp online. But again, it wasn't about um, this is the way to do it. It was about here are the things that I'm, the tools that I'm using and here are the things that are working well. So it was practice sharing. Um, and also there was always an opportunity for discussion so that it, it wasn't just here's some information. There was the opportunity to talk about the advantages, the disadvantages, the application of the process and to allow that, that real kind of collegiate thinking process with colleagues right across the college, not only for senior lecturers. Um, and the, the last uh, point there is about a practice sharing page that we created on the intranet. We realised that there was so much going on, there was so much information, and it was far too much for people to be processing back at that, that kind of initial lockdown. And so we created an intranet page 
where we were sharing both internal uh, practice sharing and external practice sharing. And that was a, a kind of one-stop hub where we were able to put a whole load of uh, resources um, and, as well as uh, run the, the workshops that were about the ways of, of teaching online. Uh, so just to, to summarize there, I see Kenji hasn't muted me yet, but I think he's going to. Uh, so just to summarize, this was just another arm of the work that we were doing. We were bringing uh, senior lecturers together as well as other colleagues from areas across the college. And we were taking the common themes that were coming from those one-to-one -one meetings that we were having. And we were using that as intelligence to be responsive and to support people with the tools that they needed um, and the space to have the discussion around the areas that they were interested in or the challenges that they were facing. Thank you. Okay. You have timed that extremely well <laughs> because that brings us to our 30 minutes for this recorded part of the session. I just want to thank uh, John, Kyle and Karen um, for, for sharing the information with us. Um, I have to say, I almost lost track of the time. I was, I was just concentrating on what you were saying. So that's always a good sign. Now, uh, we will carry on the conversation here, but for those watching us um, on YouTube, thanks for joining us. Hope you have the chance to join a live session in the future. Until then, stay safe. <laughs>